Hello Geek Crew. Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. It is a new year, 2024, and it is a great time to work on yourself as you begin to start your seeds and enjoy your garden. Whether you need to set goals or kind of delve into some emotional issues you may be having, BetterHelp is the place to do it. If you guys don't know what BetterHelp is, it is an online therapy platform where you can text a therapist, call a therapist, and or do video chat with a therapist. They have 30,000 therapists to choose from. Trust me, you're gonna find one of them. So essentially all you do is you fill out a questionnaire and it goes through a number of different things from whether or not you're religious and would you like to have someone that is a part of your religion as your therapist, all the way to do you belong to a specific community? Um, do you want someone from that community? Is there any specific things you're looking for? Is it goal setting? Is it to get therapy or help for some emotional problems that you may be having? You name it. It takes about 48 hours to match you. Mine took less than 48 hours. I think it was like six hours to find me a therapist. And the first match for me was the match. It was crazy just going through that process. They matched me perfectly with someone who's going to help me with overcoming grief from the loss of three women <laughs> all in less than six months uh, here in 2023. If you want to join over 4 million people utilizing BetterHelp, then you can check out the link down below. I'll have it in the pinned comment along with the description. By clicking the link below, you are obviously helping the channel. You can get 10% off your first month with better help by also using that link down below. 2024 is the time to start living a happier, healthier life and better help is the way to do it. Better help, thank you for sponsoring today's video. But now let's get into why seeds need light. There's two camps. One camp is no, you do not need light. The other camp is yes, you do need light. So here today, we are going to talk about the science behind whether or not to use light because this is a science-based garden cha channel where we garden with science. Ta -da! That was like my, okay, let's get into it. So germination in and of itself is a process in which a seed comes out of dormancy and the coming out of dormancy happens when the plant is exposed to water. It begins to swell the starch portions of it, which then begin an entire chemical process that ultimately results in germination. Now, one key factor we find with this process is that many seeds need a very specific temperature to germinate. And this is not ambient temperature. This is soil temperature. So I've talked about this in length. I've done videos on how to even predict when to put stuff outside based on soil temp. You can get soil temp thermometers, the garden guide, go check it out if you want to learn kind of, this is like a curated guide. It has all the products I use as well as the videos that I think are going to help you the most as a beginner gardener or just even an expert kind of all in one piece of paper. I'll put the link down below. But regardless, this uh, soil temp is really important, whether you're growing outdoors or you're growing inside. And that is because part of the chemical reactions that need to take place, or just simply the movement of water into the cell can only take place at very specific temps. And light, whether it's light outdoors or light inside, artificial light, light ultimately does heat the soil to some degree. So reason number one to use a grow light is because it does heat the soil, you could expect quicker germination, which ultimately would result in a lack of root rot or a lack of seed rot, which we can sometimes see when we are starting plants. So that would be reason number one to use it. It actually has nothing to do with light and has more so to do with the temp of the soil. Now, with that being said, you're probably saying to yourself, Ashley, okay, that's wonderful. I've got a heat mat. I still don't need a light. However, you could be wrong. I mean, you know this because of science. 1926, there was a scientist called Kinzel and he actually took 
a ton of different seeds and germinated them under different conditions, one of which was complete darkness. He had the temperature set at 20 degrees Celsius, so that temperature was not a factor. And out of the 270 species, he saw the following results. 114 species germinated at that temp in the dark. 190 of these actually germinated in the light after experiencing hard frost, meaning they were in the dark, they were cold, and then they germinated once they saw light. Another 81 species germinated after being frozen in the dark and then continuing to be left in the dark. 81 of those species germinated. 52 of them germinated only under lit conditions, meaning light had to be present for them to germinate. And 33, only 33 were unaffected altogether, meaning they weren't affected by light, they weren't affected by darkness, they germinated regardless. Now this part is super technical and something that doesn't actually, well, it could matter to you if you're really nerdy, but the light waves. So there are red lights, there's blue lights, you name it. Red light was shown to give the best results for germination, particularly in the plants that require light to germinate. And then blue light was shown to actually inhibit germination, particularly in the plants that need light to germinate. So if you were looking for a grow light, like the blurple lights, for example, those work particularly well for germinating because of the fact that it has red light or higher levels of red light than we find in say a, a full spectrum light, like these bright whites that I have behind me. So if we know out of 270 plants, there's a list of plants that need darkness, that need light. You're probably saying, Ashley, just give me, give me the list. Give me the list of plants. The list doesn't actually matter because the list is going to reference the Latin names and not the names on the seed packages, which are what we call horticultural names or common names or just garden seed names. I mean, everyone names something different. So what you actually could use to determine whether a plant needs light or darkness is the size of the seed and or the planting depth stated on the packaging. So for example, if you have a pea seed, that's a big seed, a corn seed, that is a ginormous seed. And both of these you are told to put like three inches into the soil. This is a great indication of a plant that does not need light to germinate and or does best in an environment where they are not exposed to light because light may be a detriment to the germination process. However, on the other side of the coin, we have very tiny seeds like lettuce, for example, or celery seeds. These are so small. And if you were to cover them up with soil, they wouldn't see light. So you're probably saying to yourself, well, they're, they're gonna get to the surface eventually, Ashley. No, they won't. They don't have enough gas in the tank. You think of how much starch and food is inside of a pea or a corn seed versus a little tiny celery seed. And you start to realize that, you know, yeah, celery probably does need some gas in the tank immediately after it begins to germinate. And the gas in the tank comes from photosynthesis and photosynthesis comes from light. So if you were to germinate these in conditions in which there was no light, they can die incredibly quickly uh, before you even realize that you had germinated anything, they can be dead. And that goes for any small seed. So if your plant packaging says, so at one millimeter, or you're physically looking at the seed saying, whoa, that is small. You actually may want to just lay that on your potting soil surface and cover with vermiculite, which is a very light dusting of vermiculite, which will allow for moisture retention, but also will allow for light penetration. Now, now another case where, or a medium case where you're likely gonna wanna use light for your sanity would be things like tomatoes, peppers, okra, eggplant, things in that world where it's very obvious the seed is slightly bigger and it's telling you to plant to a lower depth than maybe a lettuce seed is telling you. They're not the size of a pea, but they're not as delicate as celery. And these plants, could you germinate under no light? Yes, you could. However, they become very leggy in the search for light. And we know this for any plant that germinates. The moment those cotyledons reach the surface, they're being told 
find light. So they will continue to search for light and get very long, very quick until they have officially exhausted that reserve inside of the seed. So the best way to prevent legginess and the best way to ensure a strong, truly strong tomato plant, truly strong pepper plant that transplants well, that is able to fruit and bear fruit without snapping, you obviously want to add some light and in particular light that is nice and close to the plant. So do you need light? It's highly dependent on what you're growing. My recommendation, if I was to tell everyone what to do, beginner, expert, you name it, I would say add the dang light. Just put it, put it on the plant. I wouldn't risk not putting the light for the sake of potential rot because of lack of warmth all the way to just that legginess. Legginess in plants, while it's correctable in some cases, it just makes a weaker plant. So even tomatoes, for example, and this is relative to you if you've ever done like a leggy tomato and then watch the video on how to correct it and you plant it deeper, et cetera, and so forth. I've done videos on advantageous roots and those are the roots that we see coming off of tomato stem. Now, not the hairs, the hairs are trichomes and that's what gives the tomato the scent. The bumps and lumps, those are actual tomato roots and they're not your classic roots. So they're not roots with root hairs and you know, they don't dig for deeper, nothing. All they're there for is for structure. They absorb some small amounts of nutrients and water, but nothing of what the natural root system does. So if we keep that in mind, and we continually plant our tomatoes deeper and deeper to try to save them, we just end up with a plant that's putting a lot of energy into roots it doesn't really need, and only are there because it's trying to support itself. What if we just skipped over that? What if we skipped over to the e around the energy put into advantageous roots that are essentially useless and let the plant focus more on foliage development, stem development, that sort of thing. And the best way to do that is to provide light right from the get-go. So my blanket choice here is light regardless of what you're growing. I even take this to the next level in my greenhouse where when I move my plants outdoors, I put a grow light inside of a greenhouse. I know it sounds crazy, but I swear to goodness, when I worked in research greenhouses, we did this like all the time, all the time. We had grow lights on top of our plants despite the fact we were in an industrial greenhouse. The reason for it is because that's how important light is to quality, quality of the fruit, quality of the seed, in the case of what I was doing, um, quality of the plant. So don't skimp on lighting, get it in place. And if you don't have lighting, you don't have lighting, I encourage you to invest in it and or just grab your plants from the nursery, uh, nice strong plants from the nursery because you, if you're a beginner gardener and you don't have strong, healthy plants, you're gonna become very quickly discouraged. It's discouraging, trust me. You're just gonna have less lackluster plants and you're gonna think it's your fault. It's not your plant, it's, it's not your fault. It's actually the light's fault. So just keep that in mind. Geek crew, comment down below whether or not you personally put grow lights on right away. If you hold off and wait, I'd love to know what seeds you hold off and wait with and why. I've always been curious about people who do that just because I'm, why? Why do you do it? I'm not judging you, but like, why do you do it? Does it give you better results? I don't know. I would say no, but regardless, <laughs> hit that subscribe button if you want to join the geek crew because we garden with science and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.